Huawei's got hot new 2019 P30 and P30 Pro phones on the market, and I'm dying to put the cameras head-to-head, -head, or rather phone-to-phone, -phone, against Apple's 2018 iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max. But Huawei isn't sending me any review units anytime soon. So what am I going to do? Call in the pros who have the phones, that's what. And that means, once again, Daniel Bader, Managing Editor of Android Central. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Renee. It's great to be here. So you just got back from Paris where you got to see the new Huawei P30 and P30 Pro? I sure did. I'm still jet lagged, but it was a great experience. All right, so um, where do the new Huawei P30s win? Like if you're comparing them to Apple's iPhone XS and XS Max. Well, this is a phone all about the cameras, plural, and this was evident from the beginning. And in this case, it's the sheer number of cameras. This has five in total four on the back, one on the front. And in particular, there is a very high megapixel, 40 megapixel uh, main sensor on the back. It's a huge, comparatively huge sensor. It's one over 1.7 inches, which is, you know, very, very big by yeah. smartphone standards. Uh, the average is, you know, one over, uh, you know, 2.6 inches or, uh, even smaller than that. So this is a very large sensor and it does extremely well in low light by basically doing a combination of long exposures plus pixel binning. So it takes 40 megapixels, you know, smushes them all together into a 10 megapixel photo and you have a lot more light to work with. And it's got a periscope. Well, that too. And, and I think that's actually something that will be uh, increasingly common in smartphones in the next couple of years uh, with, you know, physics being what it is. You can't put a large yeah. sensor and a long focal length lens into a camera, uh, into a smartphone. So you basically have to use a prism uh, to reflect light off of it so that you can actually have the sensor deeper inside the phone. It's a really interesting solution to a problem that a lot of companies have been trying to solve for many years. Yeah, I mean, in the old days, Lumia went the opposite way because cameras want depth and phones really don't. So they just put a huge honking lens on the outside and this one's going inside. Right. I mean, this is a smartphone first. And as much as they tout it as a camera, it's still relatively thin. It doesn't have a shutter button. You know, it's got a, a pretty small camera bump. But the Lumias of the past were massive. They were 12, 13, 15, inch, uh, 15 millimeters thick. This is not what that phone was. This is not a, a Lumia 1020 or a pure view uh, of any sort. This is really just a Huawei smartphone that happens to have a lot of cameras. All right, so where does the iPhone still win in all this? Huawei is still way behind in terms of software. It's where Samsung was in 2015, 2016 in terms of design. It really does not have any ecosystem to speak of. It's just not a great software experience at all. That being said, it's getting better. It's slowly iterating, getting rid of those those, you know, systemic bugs that we found in previous versions of the software. But the iPhone is really just an all-encompassing uh solution. And even when it comes to the camera, you know, there are certain things that the iPhone just does better in terms of the experience. The camera app in particular uh, on the P30 Pro feels quite janky, for lack of a better term, and the inability to use just a single thumb to zoom in and out. You know, zooming from the massive, you know, wide angle lens all the way up to 10X or 50X, that should be really easy, but it's not. You have to hold the phone, you have to take your finger and press the button that's halfway down the screen. It's really not an innovative or intuitive solution to a problem that should have been solved through software. It's because Marquez called it the creeper mode, right? They want to make it tough for you to actually 50 zoom creep on people. They don't. They don't want to make it hard <laughs> at all, Renee. That's the whole thing. They are encouraging you to creep, but they're just putting a, you know, a slight UX roadblock in your way. If you were recommending it, who would you recommend the Huawei uh, to? Who should go with the P30 Pro? Well, no Americans because you won't be able to buy it. But that's yeah. besides the point. But really, this is a photography-focused phone. Uh, the phone is the kind of experience, the kind of P30 
you know, the piece of technology that you really makes a point and shoot camera superfluous. I really yeah. think that this phone, you know, obviates the the need for a separate camera in the sense that you get you go all the way from 0.6x on the wide to 10x relative lossless. I, I ignore the 50x because it's basically unusable. But anything between that 0.6 and 10x, it's basically a an equivalent of 12 millimeters all the way up to say 400 millimeters uh, with a 35 millimeter equivalent lens. So we're talking a very, very uh, wide range of focal lengths and the results that you get in anywhere in between that they're amazing and they're they're really usable i mean you can share this you're not going to print massive uh photos and, and put them on your wall most likely but it's extremely social socially usable uh for the internet and that's where i think this comes into play then who should still buy the iphone 10s or maybe more apropos at this point who'd be better off waiting for an iphone 11 Right. We've heard rumors that the iPhone 11 will have a wide angle lens, add a third lens. Um, you know, there's there's practicality concerns with having a 5X zoom on a phone compared to a 2X, right? Obviously, with the iPhone 10s, the, the, the telephoto lens is used for depth and therefore it crops those portrait photos to uh, a much closer um you know, respect and therefore you get a more typical portrait mode, whereas on the iPhone XR, it uses that single lens and, and you get a, a wider shot. And some people prefer that. I'm sure you've had that discussion with many people <laughs> with the um, with the P30 and anything above 2x zoom. You really don't have that telephoto lens coming into play for depth. Okay. This uses a time of flight sensor to uh, approximate depth, which works quite well. But the portrait mode on a Huawei phone is kind of laughable. It's really not very good. Uh, they haven't figured out those algorithms just yet. And most of the, the edge detection is, is, is quite bad. Um, that being said, the practicality concerns around a 5X a zoom mean that anything between 1x and, and 4.9x is just cropping that main 40 megapixel sensor which introduces a lot of noise and if you do want to get a 2x zoom uh, it's not a it doesn't give you a great experience whereas with the iphone i think that if you're not looking to use creeper mode for lack of a marquez <laughs> term uh you're you're really not getting any advantage there uh there are real reasons that you would want a 5x zoom but not all the time so it seems like the iphone is still the mainstream phone and the p30 is for someone who really wants to play around with huawei's advanced photography features yes i, I mean there are there are obvious you know advantages too to uh having a more natural look when it comes to your your photos huawei defaults to using something called master ai mode which ramps up the saturation and the contrast and yeah. and the and just the the dynamic range and the HDR mode and uh, the HDR results in in that master AI mode are are just ridiculous it looks like you're in a painting most of the time so well, always color science is more like a mad science yeah it's it's <laughs> definitely again where samsung was two or three years ago yeah and where it believes that its customers want but unfortunately you really don't need all of that uh exaggeration i just want a nice beautiful color accurate photo uh you're, you're not going to hear things like dcip3 or you know 100 percent srgb coming out of the mouths of huawei executives because that's just not the market that they're aiming for yeah but you'll hear grass ai detection and beauty mode <laughs> well you'll you'll hear um uh, my, my colleague Alex Doby was in the catacombs of Paris and he posted a photo of a bunch of a pile of bones and Huawei thought that it was a pile of leaves. Uh, so <laughs> the, the, AI, the AI isn't quite as accurate as I think it, uh, Huawei would like to admit. 
Daniel Bader, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me, Renee. This is a pleasure. Now, it's not easy to do remote videos like this, and it's not easy to edit them so they come together in even a halfway decent way, but that's why there's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in photography, video, business, technology, everything you need to make an amazing YouTube channel. They even have Evan from Polymatters teaching how to do all the awesome animation he does in all of his videos and how he does everything else from research to storytelling to scripting to putting it all together. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work that you love. To sign up, visit the link in the description and the first 500 of you get two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes for free. Act now and start learning today. Thanks Skillshare and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Last month, Daniel and I talked Galaxy S10 versus iPhone XS, so make sure you check that out. Link in the description. Hit like, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. Now that you've seen the iPhone XS versus the P30, how do you think the math will change when Apple takes iPhone to 11? And thank you so much for watching.